I don't know whose knife this technically is. I own this knife, obviously. But I mean, like, is this Chucky's knife? It's not Jason's, obviously. Hughes' is a machete. It's not Ghostface, because that's, like, a hunter's knife that has, like, the thing at the end of it, like, the curved part. So is this Michael's knife? Or is Michael's knife bigger? I don't know. Not that I'm a size queen, knife-wise, or whatever. Welcome back to the Color Should Have Been YouTube channel. My name is Garrett, and I'm finally bringing you my review for Halloween Kills. I'm gonna be honest, this last week hasn't been easy for me mental health-wise, and the popular public discourse of this movie is everyone is hating on it. It's not bad. If you like it, great if you hate it great but i'm afraid that if i make the incorrect opinion that is yours you won't like this video even though i might have my own reasons for liking something that you don't so this video has been one that i've just been putting off because I'm nervous about it and I'm just so anxious. But I'm gonna get over that because I really do want to talk about this movie. I actually like this movie. Is it the best Halloween film? No, that's gonna always be the 1978 movie. There's no way you're gonna beat that. Does this ruin the franchise? Hesitantly, I'm saying no. So there's slight spoilers in this review. I'm not gonna explicitly say anything to ruin your viewing of the movie, but I'm gonna talk about some things that might affect how you view the movie. So I don't wanna do that. So go watch the movie. It's in theaters and streaming on Peacock if you have the premium subscription, I believe. So there's ways for you to watch it and you should do it. Make your own opinions. That's the best part about film. Everyone can have their own opinion when they watch the same movie. I don't mind this movie feels incomplete. It's part two of a trilogy, and I've seen a couple of people complain like, well, it should be its own film. Yes, it should, and it is. It has its own themes and messages and storyline it's telling. And it's a bit of a bummer, I will say that. I didn't enjoy how this movie ends, but one of the greatest movies of all time is Empire Strikes Back, and that ends on a bummer. Luke loses one of his hands and Han Solo is frozen in carbonite. So like, bad things happen. Am I saying Halloween Kills is on the same level as Empire Strikes Back? <laughs> no, no way I would never do that. But, this is its own movie. It's its own experience. I wanted to talk about how to like manage your expectations in the movie, but that's then shifting the blame onto the viewer themselves and not talking about the movie itself and why things aren't working for some people. And I get that. At the same time, if you want someone to see a movie the way you saw it, it's good to let them know this isn't the Strode family movie, it's Haddonfield's movie. This movie is about the town of Haddonfield and us finally knowing what the people of Haddonfield care about Michael Myers, what their thoughts are, what actions they would take against Michael Myers. The Halloween movies are very focused. You have your final girl or main protagonist or Dr. Loomis or a group of teenagers and a thing or a reality television show. It's never a whole town that Michael Myers is affecting. He's killing the people inside of them. And this movie shows us what happens in a mob mentality sort of way. Is it as in-depth as it could go? No is a little bit insensitive the way the mob mentality arc ends. Yes, there's a kill in this movie that's not really a kill, it's more of just a death. But they show us the gore of this death, and that takes away the emotion. I was really close to crying during this scene, I will be honest. This was in the hospital with the mentally ill patient. And I cried because he's scared and everyone's trying to get at him because they think he's Michael Myers. And I felt for him. And I didn't like how they showed what happened in the end. It was... It was rough. It didn't feel good. Like, it didn't sit well with me. They did something wrong. And I love, love the way this ties into the 1978 movie. The beginning of the film and some bits during the middle are set in 1978 during the night of the first movie. And everything technical about this feels like it's 1978. The camera work, the framing, 
the score, the way Michael attacks people, the dialogue, the set design, the direction. I can list every single thing about these scenes and it feels like it's attached to the 1978 movie. So those scenes were really fun because it builds the in-universe lore of what happened. There's more characters in this story now than just Laurie Schrode that night in 1978. You have Linda's father, you have Hawkins, the cop who was on the scene with Michael in 1978. Lindsay, Tommy, the nurse at the beginning of the movie. I love lore in something. I love the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise because of the amount of lore that's in those games. Do I like jump scares and being killed? No. But the information and story presented to us is really interesting to me. Do I love horror movies? Yes. Do I love being scared in them? No. Do I like seeing people die? Iffy if it's something new and inventive and like really rocks my brain as to how fucking terrifying it is. So for them to build the town of Haddonfield, the people inside, what they're thinking, what happened in 1978 more than what we just saw in that first movie, what's going on in our main characters' brains, Lori, Allison, and Karen, this movie worked for me. The problems I had in the 2018 Halloween fixed. They give time to the passing of Ray. Sartain isn't in this movie, so I don't hate the twist because there is no twist in this film. I went into this movie not really expecting a lot. I just wanted the story to progress in a way I found interesting and to get scared because it's October. I'm going to see a Halloween movie. I want to be scared. To be honest, it's really easy to scare me. I'm a big baby when it comes to horror. And this movie did that. Great kills, great gore, great set pieces that give an atmospheric tone of scares. There's more tension in this. Michael is more brutal because he's pissed off that he got trapped in a fucking house that was burning on fire. Which the way they show he lives, I really enjoyed. That was really smart how they pulled that off. It feels like there was a plan from the 2018 Halloween to tie it into the 1978 and to tie the next movies further on. I really appreciated what they did. Whether or not that was actually what they started out with, I don't know. There are deleted scenes that show otherwise in the 2018, but those deleted scenes aren't canon because that's not what was released in theaters. So I'm going with the canon of the story, and I had so much fun with this movie. Do I wish Laurie Strode did more in this movie? Yes. Do I like what they did? Yes. I like what her character went through. It makes sense what she's physically going through, from the 2018 movie that she's not some god and can easily just get back on the streets. No, she's gonna be stuck where she is the whole movie. I don't mind that. Let the other characters take this story. Because I don't think Lori's gonna make it out of the next movie. This is a theory. I think for Lori to finally be at peace, she's gonna have to die with Michael. I think there's going to be some big explosion in the next movie that is going to kill her and Michael. And that's really what I think. Some more negatives. The score didn't stand out to me as much as it did in the 2018 movie, which is fine. Doesn't have to be the same. They do different things. The title sequence score is different. It's more of a melodic piano than like a synth, bass, drum poppy version of the score from the original movie. I don't know, this isn't like an art movie, so it's really hard to like point out exact things I didn't like. The ending again didn't sit well with me. I get why they do it. I appreciate it. It did affect my viewing experience just because I felt so empty and dead and hopeless at the end of this, which if that was the attempt, they succeeded but I didn't like that they were going for that. This is a really hard movie to grade because it's not some like movie that's amazing. I'm gonna give Halloween Kills an eight out of 10. It's not better than the 2018 Halloween, but it's not worse. It's the same score, but different reasons. I don't know. This is just a hard movie to review. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on the film. Again, if yours are different, I'm happy they're different. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about this film. If you like this video, give a like. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. 
Bye bye There's two things I loved about this movie. The first, when characters are searching for Lindsay, they're shouting her name very much like Linda does in the first film. Made me laugh because that's something I really enjoy from that movie. And two, another tie-in to the 1978 film, Michael does this really weird thing at the mental facility in 1978, and he does it again in this movie, and I just like that they embrace that Michael Myers is a fucking weirdo. And I loved it, and it was such a small thing, but it made me laugh as well and appreciate the movie more.